All right, so uh, today we're going to learn a little bit about React, right? So basically, I think the first question to ask about React is, um, why should I use this library? You know, uh, for a beginner, this is a very important question to ask because React is expensive in a sense. It's expensive because it's going to take a lot for you to learn it, especially as a beginner. There's a lot of little nuanced parts to it and a lot of libraries that go on the side and attach to it. And so really, it feels like when you have to learn React, you're not just learning one thing. You're, you're learning all these sort of things and it can be overwhelming. So um, I hope that by going over the problems in modern web development and showing you how React solves them, you can get to a strong understanding of why you should use this library. Another thing that we're going to be covering is a little bit of React terminology. In getting used to the words, the phrases that are used inside the React documentation and other videos, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to learn. So a couple key things to notice while you are uh, watching this video is the HTML DOM tree nodes, virtual DOM, and dirty checking. And we're going to be going over each one of those, uh, mostly HTML DOM and virtual DOM, because why you should use React has a lot to do with the theory behind how it works. OK, so the first thing to cover is the HTML DOM. Well, what is the DOM anyway? The DOM stands for the Document Object Model, and it's an abstraction of a structured text. So your structured text is your HTML. It has a certain structure, it has a certain shape, and so the document object model is, is an abstraction, or you could say a representation, of the structure inside, inside, inside some structured text. For this specific example, we're talking about the HTML DOM, that is a representation of the HTML in some form of objects. That's why it's called document object model. So the HTML that you know is a tree of, well, the HTML DOM is a tree of objects. That means you have a parent object and you have lots of children, right? So what's printed to the page is uh, is this HTML and then the DOM is a representation of how those things interact with each other. That is, which element on the page, which div is a parent and which div is a child. Right? So you can, you can uh, imagine that the root of this tree, that is the HTML DOM, the root of the tree, the first object is called document. And you've probably used the document object in the document object model before when you've done document get element by ID, right? This is a pretty common way to uh, get specific elements from the DOM. And we call a specific element inside the DOM a node. And so that's why I put tree node on the vocabulary list, because inside of the object tree, your document object model, each object, each nested object is a node. And so when you do document.get element by ID, it finds the, the, the DOM, will navigate through that tree and find an object or a node with a specific ID. So what is the virtual DOM? The virtual DOM is part of React. And basically, it's an abstraction of the HTML DOM. That is to say, it is a representation of a representation of HTML. And this representation is done entirely in JavaScript, and it's held entirely within the computer's memory. So one of the downsides to React is that it's pretty memory heavy. So that means that it's using a lot of the uh, memory inside your web browser and in your computer, because it's creating a representation of the HTML DOM inside JavaScript. Well. Basically, what's the problem? You know, we talked a little about what they are, but what are they for? What do they do? And basically, there are two problems, because 
with all these modern UIs, they have a lot of interaction. You want to be able to click on things and things are going to be animated and go to different pages and all sorts of different stuff, especially with the, with the advent of the single page application. So the problem that we have is we need to know when we need to re-render. If somebody has clicked on a like button, how do we know that we need to turn that like button blue? Right? How do we know when to re-render? And the second question is, once we know when to re-render, how do we re-render efficiently? Because we've got a giant tree of objects and we really just want to change one little piece. So the first part of that is when do I re-render? The way that the HTML DOM answers this question is by something called dirty checking. And this is another one of those words on the vocabulary at the beginning. So dirty checking means to recursively search through the tree at a fixed interval. So every however many milliseconds or whatever, any whatever the fixed interval is, it's going to recursively, that is, it's going to look deeply into every single node on the tree to see if something changed. And you can already tell that this is not an elegant solution because we have to continuously look at everything and basically it's just a we, the only way we will know if something changed is if we stumble upon it by accident, right? There's nothing that's going to explicitly tell us what has changed. The way that the virtual DOM approaches this question is that it provides for you, React provides for you explicit methods that are triggered inside of React functions. And one of, them, one of those functions is called set state. And I'll definitely do, of course, a video on this that will explain in detail the uh, the rendering methods or the virtual DOM updating methods inside React. But one of them is set state. And what it does is when we trigger it, it tells us exactly when something has changed and it tells us where. So that's how uh, React deals with the question, when do I re-render? The next question is, how do I re-render efficiently? Now, the HTML DOM, this, this is where things get a little tricky and there's a little controversy. So this, this one's a little tough to figure out, but how do I re-render efficiently? The HTML, if you think about the tree that the HTML DOM is using, the tree of nested objects, it's really good for navigation. And I'm sure that you've probably already done a little bit of object navigation in JavaScript, just when you've done, you know, my object dot some method or dot some property, right? You, you've accessed nested objects before. The HTML DOM does exactly that. It's great for navigating and great for finding the nodes inside the, in the document object model. Right? In fact, it's so great that it's actually very fast at finding that one thing and then, uh, and then uh, doing the update. That's the very fast part of the HTML DOM. But then you'll see all these people saying, ah, the HTML DOM is so slow. That's why we need React. Well, the part inside the HTML DOM re-rendering, which replaces an object in the tree, that part is fast. The slow part is when, uh, <laughs> when it's replacing nodes on the tree. It can find them very, very efficiently, but once it replaces them, it has to tell the, it has to tell the engine, the browser engine, to reprint the entire model. Okay, so what does the browser do? Basically, the browser looks at the docu the HTML DOM, and it recalculates the C the CSS. It does the layout of the entire page, and then it prints everything to the browser so that it's visible to you. That is what takes a lot of time. Okay? And the problem is that once the HTML DOM replaces a node, it needs to recalculate the CSS, do all the layout, it needs to do all that stuff all over again for the entire DOM. The virtual DOM gets around this by applying patches to the HTML DOM. Basically what React is doing behind the scenes is it's holding up these two DOMs, the HTML DOM and the virtual DOM, and creating a difference or a diff between them. What it does is once it gets that that little difference, it sends that difference as a patch directly to the browser engine. Now the browser engine only has to reprint a portion 
of, of, the, of the screen. So that's how React deals with the problem of re-rendering efficiently. Now the final thing to say is that you probably know pretty well that single page applications are huge. They're absolutely taking over the internet. So you can imagine that there's a ton of DOM manipulation happening. DOM manipulation is, is what you're doing when you're changing nodes on the HTML DOM and reprinting the DOM. And so all of this stuff is happening inside JavaScript because in single page applications, it's JavaScript that is used for navigating a single website. It, it decides which page is displaying all these things now. So React has stepped in to make a more efficient method for updating the web page with specific node patches and state methods like set state. And we'll go further into detail into that. Uh, I think first we're going to take a look at JSX theory and maybe do a little bit of coding, but now hopefully you understand that React is a solution to uh, the problem of lots of manipulation with the HTML DOM.